I don't need that. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'd like to thank you for coming this morning. I know we had a lot going on, and I appreciate the time you've taken to come. I'm Inspector Jennifer McKinnon from the Major Crimes Division. Mm -hmm. I'd like to introduce you to the uniformed divisional commanders who've joined me here today. I have Inspector Max Waddell from the West District who will also join me at the podium. And I have Inspector Jer Eric Luke uh, from the Central Division. In December, we announced the Property Crimes Unit Retail Theft Initiative that was running during the holiday season. This initiative consisted, consisted of a multi-layered enforcement approach that included warrant sweeps, the Crime Stoppers Retail Theft 10 Most Wanted, and focused enforcement at identified retail hotspots throughout our city. As a result, 138 individuals were arrested for shoplifting and fences. In 2023, we saw a drop between November and December that wasn't observed in 2022. In December 2023, there was 459 shoplifting incidents, a 14% decrease over the 640 reported incidents of November in 2023. This initiative can't take all the credit, and that's why I've asked the divisional commanders to join me here today. There is a lot of work being done throughout our city through the presence of officers working special duties in retail locations and the ongoing commitment of community support units who've been working to address these issues in their communities. Our services commitment to retail theft didn't stop over the holiday season. In partnership with the Retail Council of Canada, Winnipeg retailers, large and small, Crime Stoppers, the Property Crimes Unit, and community support units throughout the city, we continue to work towards a collaborative approach to this ever-evolving issue of retail theft and public safety. This approach continues with the focused enforcement projects, but also looks at further deterrent measures and investigations into individuals selling stolen property online. We also recognize that issues surrounding retail theft are complex and we remain committed to working with our community partners and social safety net providers to ensure supports are provided to individuals that may be struggling. Heading into spring break, we are anticipating an increased presence of shoppers in our retail locations. Whether these are families out enjoying their time together, students picking up extra retail shifts, or our own community youth out to meet friends in the mall, we want everyone to be safe and enjoy their spring break. So similar to the Christmas season, the Property Crimes Unit, working with the community support units and our loss prevention partners, will be conducting fo focused enforcement at various retail locations throughout the city over spring break. Once again, you won't know when and you know, won't know where we are, but we will be out there. If the intention is to go out and shoplift during the spring break, uh, chances are we're going to be out there looking for you. I'd like to invite Inspector Maxwell Dell up to, up to the podium to speak to uh, the ongoing work of our community support units. Good morning, everyone. Uh, for the record, my first name is Max. Uh, my surname is Waddell. It's spelled W-A-D-D-E-L-L. -L, and I'm the inspector overseeing uniform operations in West District. That is essentially the uh, southwest quadrant of the city of Winnipeg. Today, I would like to con continue the conversation around retail theft. Retail theft is much more than a monetary loss. And not to downplay that businesses aren't losing money, I am of the belief that Retail theft is driving much of the violent crime you're seeing in the city today. When criminals steal goods from stores, they are turning the goods into cash. That's done in the underground market, that's done in the black market. And when they convert the property to cash, they are then often buying illicit drugs, potentially weapons, and in extreme cases are buying firearms. That all collectively comes together to drive what you're seeing in these rises of violent crime. Retail theft is serious and we need to be treating it very, very seriously. We also know with individuals who are taking illicit drugs, how unpredictable they are. And when individuals are as unpredictable and irrational as they are, coupled that with weapons and firearms, we're seeing increases in violent crime. In May of, two th or pardon me, May of 2023, uh, we initiated Project Falcon, which is a project dedicated in and around the Polo Park area. Uh, the jurisdictional area would be Wellington to the north, uh, the train tracks to the east of Polo Park, the Assiniboine River to the south, and Route 90. 
Essentially, it was the deployment of additional resources in and around that area to stop retail theft, to stop assaults, uh, to stop all types of serious crime. For the first 10 weeks of 2023, compared to the first 10 weeks of 2024, we've seen a 17.8% reduction in the almost 1,200 proactive policing hours we have spent there and made 348 arrests. So I am here to tell you that when we do deploy additional resources, we do see results. Extra police resources are having a positive impact in and around that area. That initiative is going to continue uh, from now and into the future because we've seen that said result and we're looking to, uh, to expand it to other areas uh, within the West District. So with that, um, I'm going to uh, end on that note. I don't know if anyone has any, any questions for myself, Inspector McKinnon or Inspector Luke, but uh, you can start off whenever you feel ready. So the deployment is, is anytime we have extra resources above our minimum, which is seven two officer cars, they're de being deployed in and around that area when available. And you're correct, it's not just CSU, it's also property crime members, it's also special duty members, and it's also our uniform operations members when we have them available, which is not uh, every day, but we have been able to uh, amass 1,200 hours uh, since May 15th of, of last year. Correct. Not for the initial response. Uh, of course, over time will be paid if, if we're processing and finalizing investigations, but not an initial response. Inspectors, um, as you follow the food chain, um, are you, can you comment on how organized this is in the sense that you make the arrests and then ultimately when this was first announced, you were going to kind of follow it through to see who's doing what? Are you starting to kind of get the organized part of it? I'm not sure if it's for you, Inspector Waddell, or yeah, Inspector go ahead. Where are you in that process? Because that's an important component of trying to, not necessarily shutting it down, we know you won't be able to shut it down, but certainly I'm trying to get a, a better handle. Yeah, we're absolutely, we're never going to be able to shut retail theft down. It's been here since the, the, uh, beginning of time, right? So uh, what was really interesting about the retail theft initiative that we had started conducting in, in November and December was it brought it forward identifiable individuals that were chronic offenders coming in, uh, stealing specific amounts of property and then uh, selling them online, essentially on different social media platforms like Facebook Marketplace, just to name one. Uh, so the property crime unit has uh, we do these focused enforcements, but the other uh, layer to this retail theft initiative is actually now looking at these people that are selling this stuff online and shutting down those operations. So we've had some success with that. Nothing that I'm able to uh, bring to your attention because I don't have the details of them in front of me today, but we have identifiable people uh, selling online uh, that we know are part of the retail theft issue in Winnipeg and uh, the property crime unit is now focusing on those individuals through a larger investigation. Now it used to, no, sorry I'm dating myself, but it used to be items were stolen and they were like sold in a car or the old back alley someplace. So are you seeing more of it going to this online or is it the online replacing that former hands-on well, I think I think it's twofold, uh, and I think you're dating yourself, sir, because uh, I remember when I got on, it was the back alley deal, but uh, that ages me as well. Um, I think it's hand in hand. I think we are seeing a majority of stuff being sold online. So if you do, uh, and I have a look, you'll look at Facebook Marketplace and you'll see one item in multiples with price tags on them. And you'll see this repeatedly online. However, as Inspector Max Waddell alluded to when he was speaking, uh, some items we have people who are going in to fuel uh, an addiction that are stealing not bulk but maybe higher ticket items that they can translate to buying drugs. So instead of cash, uh, they can trade off an item, a tool, uh, an expensive item uh, in regards for drugs. So we are seeing that as well. Um, but we do have a significant online uh, presence of stolen property that's being sold. And I guess without giving away your tactics, how 
how is that being addressed by the police? Do you have people who are officers who are actively online saying, oh, this looks suspicious? Or uh, well, I certainly I'm not going to get into tactics, but I it, it literally I don't need officers. It, it hits you over the head. Any one of us in this room can go online and identify a site that is stealing and uh, uh, selling stolen property. However, the property crime unit is in identifying these individuals and uh, working uh, through an investigation uh, to be able to bring it to a successful prosecution after arrest. Inspector Waddell, is there um, when you talk about the, the seriousness and the violence of this, is there a, an incident that you can point to that you're saying, you know, you shake your head at and say that this is one of those incidents where we're starting to see how this is fueling um, uh, the violence on the retail scene? Well, Richard, one uh, incident that comes to mind is was at Polo Park, uh, where a youth was walking uh, through the mall where he was attacked by, I, I believe it was six other youths. Uh, to steal his cell, cell phone and personal property, and uh, he was seriously injured. Uh, we were thankfully not too far in the area, and we were able to apprehend the majority of those individuals. But this goes on many, many times. And as we all know, a lot of crime in this city is unfortunately underreported. And I continually say that. The stats that we're acting on, that's not all the crime that's going on in this city. It's people just quite simply don't want to deal with the police, or they just feel they'll take care of the matter of, of themselves. But that, that's one that sticks out. It's, it's the violence and, and the, the propensity for it and the seriousness of it. I mean, we're having attacks with knives and hammers and serious weapons. Uh, you know, we, could, we can potentially lose lives over these types of, uh, of, of incidents. So is it just because these kids in school likely to be out, out and about the community that you're just, police are just expecting there may be more theft because of that? Or what's, what's driving it? Yeah, the, the purpose of today is is not only a, a warning, but it's it's the messaging around that uh, the public and anyone going to malls needs to be prudent. They need to be always aware. And, you know, we've seen this happen in the past. So we want to get ahead of it. And we will be out there, as Inspector McKinnon said, uh, our members will be out there. And if you're going to choose to engage in these types of activities, uh, we're going to hold you accountable. It's as simple as that. This is separate from, say, Superstore. This is separate from that, correct? Well, the Retail Theft Initiative involves all uh, retailers, uh, but when I'm talking about Project Falcon is specific to Polo Park, we do work hand in hand with Loblaws. Um, I can tell you that they are uh, really suffering with theft right now. Uh, I work very closely with Loblaws. We have vans that are pulling up to exit doors and they're stealing up to $10,000 worth of meat at a crack. And they have four or five shopping carts. So they come to the exit door, they load the van and they're gone. That's what we're dealing with here. That's organized. That's not an ad hoc person just needing this for their own personal needs. That meat is being converted for uh, illegal game. It's as simple as that. Correct. Yes, that's on their own uh, decision making if they want to hire special duty. Well, that's one example. It happened at a, uh, a superstore uh, in the southern part of, of the city, and that was their best guesstimate that, that happened. That's just one example of what we're dealing with. But when was that one? I can't recall the date, but within the last two months, for sure. Any more questions? Sorry, I got here late. If there's any chance you can kind of go over the first couple of minutes of uh, why you brought us here. Tell me, too. Yeah. <laughs> I think I should probably speak to that since I dragged these divisional commanders here today. The reason I the of this initiative is that we are expecting an increase of people out and about for spring break. Uh, that's nature of spring break. Uh, we did an initiative in December because of the holiday season. And we felt that this was a good jumping off point to not only update the public in regards to results of initiatives from the retail theft that we did, the work that Inspector Waddell and Inspector Luke have been doing with their community supports units, but also to sh show the, the citizens of Winnipeg that this wasn't a one-off thing. This is a commitment from our service to look at retail theft, the violence, the online uh, sell, resale of these uh, items and the commu continued commitment that our service has as a whole 
uh, to address this. I think the community thinks that we did our one one off at Christmas and then that's it. It's not. We're continuing to do that. We are going to be out there. We're not going to tell you where we're going to be and we're not going to tell you when we're there, but we will be out there during spring break in regards to uh, people who intend to go shoplift. So does that sum it up? <laughs> You're welcome.